Hello, everyone, and welcome to another fantastic episode of Bikinis After Babies. I am one of your hosts, Mandy Rashawn, here from Kansas City, where it is rainy and gloomy and cozy. Oh, the weather. A- <laughs> I know, right? I I felt like coming into it with the weather just because it has been really hot here in Kansas City, and I'm You're not do complaining. traffic but- next to tell us what's uh, happening on the roads today. <laughs> <laughs> my commute to work is terrible, you know, from the bedroom to my office. <laughs> yeah, it's terrible. That's I so actually funny. commute to the gym, though. So, like, I yeah. do that Monday through Friday. Mm-hmm. And I have to deal with that, but yeah. so, but thank you for joining us, everybody. We have a Hi, really everyone. good, ep- yeah, we have a great episode. Of course, I'm Mandy Rashawn here with the beautiful blonde Jillian. <laughs> Hello, everybody. If you're watching from home, maybe you can be the judge of that, but <laughs> thank you for listening in and we are so happy to be back. We hope that you loved our prior episode with Angelica. I can't lie. I am still just like on cloud nine. Beaming. I'm having. Yeah. Oh my God. Like I listen to it like, and I don't listen to every episode of ours back. Like some of them I do. Um, but that one I listened to like twice <laughs> afterwards. And it was just the things that she um, shared like about her journey and everything it was like and the timing of it because we interviewed her like three days before we competed it was our peak week yeah mm-hmm. yeah so um it was just majestical it really was mm-hmm. and uh i have really not come down from cloud nine really since then so i feel like everything just went really really fast after mm-hmm. it because on the editing side of it I was like a nervous wreck and I don't even, I don't think I even told you about that, but it's just being on the studio side of it and having to edit and having to like re-listen to everything over and over, making Mm -hmm. sure everything gets brought over to all the platforms correctly. I was just like, you would have thought it was like my very first time ever doing it because Mm -hmm. I was so nervous. I was like, nothing can happen to this. I was so nervous when we were recording. Yeah. This is precious. This is gold. I'm like, we're not going to get this opportunity again. Like, she won't, like, do it over. So, like, I was afraid that, like, you know, something technical would happen. But it didn't. It was Mm -mm. was awesome. So, yeah. It was. And she's such a beautiful person. She really is. She's amazing. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Well, how are you doing, girly? What's uh, new in your world? You know, the weather. (laughs) Other than the weather. (laughs) Uh, No. Uh, What is new? I just got done expediting a show, um, a natural show out in Iowa, Des Moines, Iowa. It was great. Um, Very easy commute. It's only about two and a half hours away from Kansas City. And it was the last spring show of the season. And then we kind of take a break until the August show in St. Charles. Mm -hmm. So it was good, though. You know, it was it was like, a, you know, we get a break in the season. It's not over, obviously, but, like, you have the spring, like, goes nuts, right? I'm competing, yeah. traveling, our athletes are competing, and then now it's, like, a little summer break. So it's nice. nice. It's been very uh, very relaxing, I'll say that. So yeah. it's peaceful. Well, yeah, what about you? Uh, oh, well, you know, just, uh, yeah, just navigating uh, the time between <laughs> shows which Mm -hmm. four weeks feels like an eternity and not for the reason that you would think like I'm not like I'm dying like I want to eat I'm tired it's just a long time to kind of wait especially when your feedback is um just small baby things and you Mm -hmm. know like normally I'm like I need every minute of that time to like get more shredded um and of yeah. course you can always come in a little bit more conditioned you know that I, I never get the comment that i'm too conditioned it, it was just that your conditioning is just right which i'm like oh okay like it's great but like mm-hmm. you know just the counting down the days and it feels like time is going so so as busy as we are it's still just like god is it only wednesday like it really just feels like time going slow so um it's good you know i'm just um trying to to just stay in the right mind frame and uh and yeah, just tick the boxes. Before I do have to I commend leave. you. I do have to commend you because, mm-hmm. as as for as in my world, everything is slowing down a little bit, and then I'm done competing for this season, so I'm transitioning into my off season. That you are doing like the opposite right now, almost in every way. I'm still driving my kid around, but it's up the street and back. It's so small and it's so short lived. Whereas you're, you're driving all your kids around everywhere all the time, nonstop in the thick of it, having, you know, like 
you're like the polar opposite of me right now. So I just have to commend you because every time we talk on, you know, all our different platforms, <laughs> you have your shit together. All day, everywhere. <laughs> yeah, it's just, you know, I think it it's not new. So it, it isn't like, a, like overly challenging. Um, and I really got myself in a really good place like going into mm-hmm. like summer I think it would be different if I didn't feel like I was ready or um you know I was nervous like I, like I've been in p- prior preps I've been a hot freaking mess and I'm no fun to mm-hmm. be around but this year has been a, a totally different um and of course I'm, I'm used to you know navigating summers with five kids but my son did get a car yesterday so <gasps> yeah I'll have one le- and he's busy because he's um a varsity wrestler and he wrestles um for like a club team as well so he's I'm running him all over the place all the time so one one less to drive around but it's not new like I actually just had to put my uh, computer on do not disturb because I've got like oh can Chloe come for a play date can Ellie come and do this can Brooklyn is here and I'm like I can't right now I'm working like I have to people, right like I don't think people forget that I for work that I work but like you know it's I'm kind of working all the time like I was posing the other night at like 8 30 which isn't mm-hmm. ideal. I was so tired, but I was just like, mm-hmm. you know, girl, you got to do it. You got to do it no matter when it is. It's important. Um, and so I was proud of myself for doing that because it was all I, it was like the last thing I wanted to do is like after all your meals and it's late and you're stiff and tired and you want to go to bed and it's like, oh, I'm going to put a bikini and go work on posing in my basement. <laughs> right. So it's, it's fine. I'm just uh, keeping busy is my secret to staying on track because I don't have time to think about food. <laughs> I just Mm-mm. don't. Nope. You just got to grab and eat your food that you're already and ready and go. Like, I can't procrastinate workouts. I can't because there, there's no time to make it up. If I don't do it mm-hmm. when I'm supposed to do it, it doesn't happen. So I just got to get it done. Yeah. Can't, can't think about it. So, so yeah, that's it. Yeah. So, <laughs> well, and sort of in the spirit of where you're at in your journey, mm-hmm. Today we are going to talk about slaying your off season and maybe you'd like to share some updates of like what you're doing post show and what your thoughts and plans are because I've had a little time for the dust to settle after your show Mm -hmm. as we're now what are we like two weeks since we both competed it's it's two weeks yeah it's two weeks now. Mm-hmm. And I've been just yeah. It's only been one weekend. Yeah, all the food porn that you've been sending me, <laughs> <laughs> and that I've seen on your um, on your Facebook too. You know, just like tweets <laughs> and stuff. So why don't you share yeah how that's been going? Oh, uh, it's been good. So after I competed in Omaha, like I knew I was gonna go into an off season. I knew because of, you know, like I've shared previously, my back flared up for. Uh, those new listeners, I had a herniated disc uh, back in 2022, um, was able to heal it with a lot of um, other, you know, chiropractor, massage, all sorts of stuff, um, exercise, mobility exercise. And now it healed and it allowed me to push myself, train really hard, have a really great, you know, prep, a really long prep. I started my prep in September. Yeah. And, you know, I used all of 2023 uh, to, to basically just lift heavy and eat food and travel and spend time with family. So going into about like four or five weeks going into Omaha, I knew I was like, okay, my body is worn out. I'm noticing things. It's harder for me to like lose weight. Um, I was very stagnant, very sore. I was in a lot of pain. So I knew I was going to go into an off season. So I communicated that with my coach off the bat. So I wanted to let her know that this is what was going to happen. And she was a hundred percent off on board. Like there was, there was no argument. Um, so going into that, I, you know, post show going into a reverse, it's been fantastic. Mm -hmm. I have navigated it better than I ever have. I feel like after every single show, I get better at it. Mm -hmm. It, I feel like it's never, it will never be perfect, but knowing that we were going to talk about reverse dieting today, I kind of went down like, um, a little, not rabbit hole, but like, what was my first show like post show? <laughs> yeah, and I want to get into that today too. Because, oh my gosh! Yeah. Okay, I so think, I'll put, I'll I think put a pin in that. Got us to put a let's put a pin in it. And we're gonna we'll put a back pin to that. in that one. We'll circle. Yeah. We'll circle back. We'll circle back. <laughs> like, like if, if we can freaking remember, we can do I it. Can, You'll remember. You have to be the brain now. You have to be the brain. Remember we talked about that? Like if we're both prepping at the same time, like how, you know, disastrous that could be. But now you have brain power. So, okay. I have a little, I have, I have my, my, my brain has the extra calories and the extra energy to hold the load for us. Okay. Okay. (laughs) Thank you. I need you. So, 
<laughs> I'm here for you. I got you. Thank you. <laughs> so, but no, um, knowing that I was going to go into it, I kind of already had a plan. I already, I knew what a reverse diet was kind of supposed to look like and how it was supposed to kind of happen, especially as a coach doing it before. So, you know, after show, I have specific rules and I really, I'd like to speak heavily about this, uh, especially for new competitors, seasoned mm -hmm. competitors. When you are walking on stage and you just worked so hard, rather it be 16 weeks, two years, 18 weeks, 24 weeks, whatever it may be, weight loss challenge, um, that you, you know, transformation, stockpiling treats in your room or, or bringing yeah. stuff with you is a recipe for disaster, no matter what excuse you tell yourself. So knowing that this was my last show of this season, I, knew that after that I needed to have, you know, a lot of water, a lot of electrolytes. I grabbed a few like treats that some girls were handing out. I put them in my bag. Had I knew I wasn't going to eat them, but I was going to be respectful and, mm -hmm. you know, say, Oh, thank you. Like, I really appreciate it. Never do I have treats in my room. Um, and then going into like my first week into off season, I started, I communicate with my coach, my dinner plans that my husband had for me. But even then, I stayed true to myself. I mm -hmm. didn't go out and splurge. I didn't go out and eat things that aren't um, agreeable with me. I'm not going to go out and eat nachos and pizza and like a whole bunch of cookies and cakes and cupcakes. And, you know, I'm not going to eat food from a gas station. I'm not going to eat things just because I can. It's it's bad for you. And it's not part of who I am. So, okay, you know. But did I, you always know that? Because I feel like no. you can only say that because you've had an experience where it didn't go well. And yes, on a podcast I listened to um, earlier this week, they said like pretty much every competitor will screw up their first reverse because you just don't know mm -hmm. what to expect. You don't expect to struggle. You really have never had the experience of doing something so intense and strict before. Um, and you know, there's a lot of emotions and everything. So, um, so yeah, I think it, it's like that. This is a great, like, um, but a tip sheet, but I think that, you know, it, it does come from having effed up in the past, right? Yeah. Cause you can, you can contribute to this as well. Oh, the yeah. word, the words reverse dieting never was a thing up I until know. like, I want to say like 17, 18. Yeah. I would ish, agree. Like mm -hmm. that time frame, like 2017 or 18, because when you know, before then you walked on stage, you were done and you celebrated and you ate like dog shit. Like <laughs> oh, yeah, the promoters would have pizza backstage uh -huh, and cakes, all, cupcakes. And they still do have, you know, treats and stuff at shows. But yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, it was like, we, we had a big team at the time, guys and girls back then in, you know, 2015, 16, and we had a table and it was covered everybody. It was like a potluck of just yeah. tons and tons of food. And then somewhere along the line, um, and maybe newer experience, like less experienced competitors can kind of say, you know, like that maybe they've always seen people talk about reverse dieting, but I think it was the backlash of so many people rebounding and maybe like thinking more about like the people health got of so the sick. Sport. Yes. We, yeah. I mean, like men and women, we all got so sick. It was, it was terrible. Like, so my yeah. first time, my first time I didn't get sick. So my first show 2016, I did two shows. I did them relatively close together. First one was like in August and the next one was like maybe like a month or two later. And I struggled just with that mm -hmm. because nobody explained to you the fact that you deprived yourself of food, of certain foods for, I think I did my first prep was like 30 weeks or something like that. Yeah. And, and then after that, it's like, oh, let's celebrate. Nobody mentally prepares you to not celebrate. And in our culture, we're taught to celebrate with food. Or to and give so, you parameters to what that should look like. Anything. Anything. Yeah. So mm -hmm. as soon as I walked off stage, it was just no holds bar. It yeah. it was. Like for one, I was on vacation because I was in I was in California. I was in LA. And so we just we I ate whatever I wanted. And it was a little bit of literally everything. Mm -hmm. I didn't get sick, but I definitely gained all, like, I gained weight back. I didn't have, you know, I didn't feel good. 
I stepped right back on stage a couple, I think it was like a month or two later. I p- didn't place at all, like nothing. It was a, I was a hot mess. And then after that, I gained everything back. Because same thing, I, I had no parameters. Mm-hmm. I didn't know anything about food. I had no knowledge of like what this was going to do. I just ate because it tasted good and it sounded good and it's what everybody did, right? Yeah. yeah. And I don't think mm-hmm. we were talking as much about like – we we did call it an off season. We don't now. We call it like an improvement season. But back oh, you then, mean bulking? We called it bulking. Yeah, yeah bulking or <laughs> like an off season really like implies that you're off, right? And now mm-hmm. I think there's more of like um, sort of an idea around like being an athlete all the time, um, and it's because we have so many amazing. Um, resources now we have you know podcasts and we have all these things like back when I first started you know we didn't I had nobody to talk to except for like the dudes at the gym and all they did was dirty bulk in the winter and then you know (sighs) shred down for a show and you did a show to lose weight like and that was like Mm -hmm. what we did so now it's way different there's so many resources but people still struggle now so that's Mm -hmm. what I want to talk about today too because I think there's a lot of shame surrounding it And because, you know, it is, it's like, wow, man, back in the day, there was a a lot of reasons why you would struggle. Like, how come I'm struggling and I have all these resources and I have a coach that gave me a plan and I have this laid out reverse. How come I'm not following it? How come I can't stay motivated now that my show is done? And that is normal. Like that is completely normal. normal. You cannot shame yourself about that because everybody's going to struggle in some way and some people are going to struggle more and it might be because they got into competing from a weight loss journey it's been a long journey and now the show's over and it's like Mm -hmm. you know you get like a little post-show blues if you just even take the food out of it it's like you like had a baby and then you're like oh the baby is like here now and like you know lost you don't know what to do you've you've been so focused on this and now it's like okay well I can I mean I'm going to the gym but I'm not like I'm not 4 days out I'm not 5 weeks out like you know where even if you have goals it's still really tough to stay motivated and you know what some people get burnt out that's all part of mm-hmm. it too you know so today I would just really want to like help people understand that it's okay and you know if mm-hmm. this is your first reverse and you're absolutely just it, it's not going well and it's sucking it, it won't be like this always and you'll find ways you're going to learn a lot about yourself, you know. Um, but mm-hmm. I think that it starts with having a reverse, which we did not have back in the day. Like, I, I don't think I had a reverse diet from any coach I worked with until like, you know, 2021. <laughs> like, it, we just it really was because like. I never had one. I like, I feel like even in 2018, when I went back to competing, Mm -hmm. it was more of a conversation of like, well, what are you going to do at like the conversation was there, but it wasn't so like, it wasn't so adamant. Like now it's like, you talk about it a couple weeks before you even go on stage a week before you go on stage, you talk about your plan, your mindset, where, where do you kind of see yourself? You know, especially if you're like, if you're going into peak week or even two weeks out, you're, you know, you're super lean, you're super shredded. So you can kind of gear like, okay, am I, am I competitive enough? Do I need to build more? And then like you have that conversation. Whereas like back then you never did that. You, the, like the conversation wouldn't exist. No, a hundred percent. And, um, and like I said too, like, I think a lot of people do come into this from weight loss. Um, they have some success and they think, what if I compete? But a lot of people come into mm-hmm. this from eating disorders too. And mm-hmm. you talk to people all the time. Like I was a dancer. I was a cheerleader. I was, you know, a track athlete. You know, I wanted abs. Like, you know, some of that disordered eating and food relationship stuff, you might have not thought about it in a long time. And now you're 42 years old and you're competing. And all of a sudden you're binging post show Mm -hmm. and you're binging and you're freaking out and then oh bodybuilding ruined me no it's the it's the stuff from the past and and honestly you can you can get through it and you can compete again because i Mm -hmm. i'm recovered from binge eating and i really thought oh yeah there i had no no way i would um be able to continue to compete and that is probably the secret well, not it's not a secret but that's why i've been competing so long because i did have to take time to repair my relationship with food and you know uh get through some stuff that i you know went through um mm-hmm. i mean i was hospitalized for anorexia when i was 12 so Aww. i'm 43 so that's like 31 years so like more than half of my life i have mm-hmm had an um you know just too much knowledge about food and nutrition and calories at a young age it turned that into my passion and my career and now I have a very healthy mindset I have three daughters and 
you know, two sons and I want to be a good role model and talk to them in ways so that they have a healthy relationship with food. But, you know, a lot of that just reared its ugly head when I first started competing. And I would just keep doing shows thinking that that was the answer until I really Mm -hmm. found that was very empty inside. And I had to really work on that. So that is why 19 years later, I'm still competing because (laughs) I had to, you know, go through some things and and I've learned a lot Mm -hmm. about myself. And now I always say like my, my struggles help other people. So, Mm -hmm. um, and that's, and that's like taking, (laughs) it's, it's good. Like that's the relatability though. And that is also another reason why we love doing this podcast, right? Like I can't relate to, isn't it? it, Like it is. And I love being a, yeah, like sharing our sharing like our experiences, even if it's raw and real. Like I never went through anything like that. Mine, my relationship with food was definitely damaged, but mine was more of the sense of emotional eating. Like I was oh, yeah. such an emotional eater, and I never could understand how I would speak to women or meet people, and they'd be like, "Oh, I'm, you know, I just am so sad or whatever, and I don't eat for days." And I'm like, I'm the polar opposite, and like I always felt like something was wrong with me, and I would always, I would always regain my weight. Like the way my genetics are, and the way like my family genetics and all the women Mm -hmm. in my family like I can see how I'm predisposed like I can see how I'm supposed to be shaped I can see if I continue down this path like kind of the shape I'm you know gonna obtain and like the weight I may be and the uh, the health that I may like put on myself like the health issues but I couldn't stop eating like yeah. If I was sad, if I was happy, if I like, I was just a, an emotional eater. But I think that is so hard to go through, except because you aren't a walking skeleton. It's downplayed as an eating disorder, but it is so hard to go through and it is disordered eating. Um, and I, but I, I, I think that there's less um, sympathy and like less support unless you're mm-hmm. like, you know, over a toilet. Throwing I hate up that or, it's accepted. It's, yeah. It drives me nuts. Like when yeah. I hear people say that, cause I, I hear it all the time now, like, oh, well, when I'm just going through this, I just like to eat. It's like, that's not good. Oh, when people because throw what the you're word doing... binge around, like, I'm like, Ooh, that's yeah. like, that's a big word. Oh, like, I just kind of binged. Yeah. yeah. But it's like, like oh, I just, I just, I just binge ate all these snacks. It's like, okay. Like, is that funny to you? It, it's not funny. It can be scary and dangerous. And like, granted, if you're listening to this podcast and you're like 25 and you're like, oh, it's not a big deal to go out and binge. Okay, well, you can say that now maybe, but wait till you're 45 and you're at the doctor's office and they're telling you you have like some type of ailment that now you have to be on medication for and you can't eat the foods that you've been eating because they're going to cause like inflammation and like diarrhea and all these issues. And now like your whole life is upside down. That's what like nobody talks about. I know. And it's just like, it's not okay. It's scary. It's, it really, and really is. And that's whole too of, of how you feel the shame after a binging episode and Mm -hmm. and oh it's never going to happen again except you know when you're going through it like it's it's just waiting for you like you Mm -hmm. and you can't fix it by doing another show um but i and we'll put this below in the show notes there is a wonderful resource celeste who does the confessions of a bikini pro podcast thank god for this woman i mean she's got so many resources and i what i love about her um Her methods is that she she helps people continue to be a part of this sport, which is really tough with disordered eating and body dysmorphia. It's really tough because, of course, you're putting your almost naked body on display and Mm -hmm. it's a reflection of what you ate and how you trained and what you look like. And that's really hard if you um, have struggled with eating disorders. And um, she does a lot of great work. So she's got um, a a program and all kinds of stuff. Mm -hmm. And and that's so great. It's a free resource. I remember going to a therapist um, for, you know, binge eating as a former anorexic and I'm in my 20s and I'm trying to talk to this woman about you know what I'm going through and she's like you probably need to just you know step away from the gym and I'm like but like I feel like I feel like I can continue that she's like but I don't see how the two the two cannot be no I don't think so and I it's was so like, hard I, to talk to people that are outside of the industry yeah, like they she, they can't comprehend it yeah they can't I mean, comprehend anything that has to do with how we live our lifestyle yeah. and even when you try I remember when I hurt my back and I had a doctor come in and they were just like grilling me for the supplements I was taking and they're like well you're taking all of these and I'm and I'm talking about just supplements by the yeah. way like just an array of like digestive enzyme fish oil like I was I, I don't even remember it was just regular supplements yeah. and they and I was very lean at the time and they were just like 
well, they like treated me like I was an alien. It was so, they're like, oh, well, you, you won't ever get to like wait, like weightlift again. I started crying because I was in so much pain and I was scared, but yeah. I was like, get, like, get, get out, like get out. There's no way. And I actually met my new doctor that way because yeah. he came in to settle me down and I was like, I really like you. And he became my new doctor, <laughs> Yeah. but he, he helped me, but I know like, and just to let you listeners know the, the. Uh, thing from Celeste that you're going to po- put in the show notes. I actually did it. I did her one of her free programs back in, I want to say it was like 22. I did it. I, I spoke with her. Um, her and I competed together back I know, in. I know. I love her. I can't. It's my yeah, dream one day to be on her show. Like my dream. Oh, it will. It's going to be coming soon. Episode. I'm yeah. going to be coming. It's going to, we're oh, going to tag her this podcast when we air it now. Yeah, we will. <laughs> but uh, no, She's I did hers. I did because I was, I was out of the emotional eating stage and I, I had a control over my eating, but similar to kind of what you said, I felt like this emptiness and I couldn't really put my finger on it. And I knew I didn't want to solve it by food because I knew food Mm -hmm. wasn't solving it, but I didn't know what to do. And I had just got done competing and I was, you know, building and I was, I think this was right before I hurt my back and I started doing, um, she sent it to me and I started working on it and I did, it helped me quite a bit to kind of just see things differently, give me a different like perspective and point of view. And it, it definitely helped me back then when I needed it. Because I, I mean, I've spent time with you and, and gone to dinner with you and socialized with you and hung out with you and all these things. And you've always seemed like, um, you know, your relationship with food is very healthy. So I think mm-hmm. it's interesting to hear that, you know, you struggled too. And like, I, I think it's our clients. We like them to know like that, you, you know, we look like we've got it together, but there was a point where we, we struggled. Um, Ooh, and- I threw up in the desert, man. <laughs> <laughs> in the desert. It's a dark a dark I did. I did I never will forget it oh, man. it was it was 2018 and it was post show and this is also why I will be a big why advocate were you, in the desert? were you hiking okay. or on a photo shoot or what were you doing no no so I will always be a big advocate to not go on vacation post show now yes. give, oh, give yes. it like give it time like if you're it, like a couple weeks or a week or something like that like give it some a grace period. Yeah, don't, don't go the like after, or like this Sunday. Yeah. So or yeah, like have no. Some, have some guidelines and a plan. You know. Yeah. So don't be a newbie like me and go right into a vacation. So no, it was like my third show, but I had taken like so much time off. So like it was, I was like coming back, mm-hmm. and I had competed in Las Vegas, and it was a beautiful, great time, awesome. I had to drive. We were vacationing in Palm Springs, and it was like a. <sighs> Four hour drive. Yes, I love Palm Springs. Yeah. So from Las Vegas to Palm Springs, California, driving through the desert after I had just been eating like shit. I just oh, ate yeah. whatever. I had no guidelines, no rules. My stomach could not process like the food. The food I ate. I don't remember what I ate. It was just a bunch of sh- stuff. It was a bunch of shit. But my food could not process it. I couldn't go to the bathroom. I couldn't figure it out. It wasn't, it was just stuck. I looked at Aaron and I was like, you have to pull over. And he's like, huh? I was like, pull over now. So he pulled over and I I had to, like, I had to make myself throw up just to get it out of me. Like I needed this feet and I was in the middle of the desert and I felt fantastic. So let me ask you a question then, Mm. because um, if you're listening and hearing these stories, you've probably thought of a million instances where you've you know had something wild happen post-show but what I find to be the most bizarre thing about post-show eating is that you can throw up in the desert and the next day why does your body want that food again like even though you know better and I want to talk about that today because there is a science behind it but I think that is the most maddening thing for anybody who you know, maybe Saturday after the show, they have a cheat meal. And then Sunday, they have a cheat meal. Monday, they're like, oh, I have a food hanger. I never want to see that food again. Tuesday rolls around and you want and then you want it again. again. It's yeah. like, you no, it was later that night. Lesson. Yeah. So yeah. I Cause that was in the morning. That's a very alarming thing where somebody's like, uh oh, like I'm maybe I should have never competed or like my, I'm a mess. What's wrong with me. But there is like, you know, things going on in your body that can explain that and and maybe for some people if they like to know what's going on and they understand the reasoning maybe they won't feel so bad about it and kind of start to you know take some of that guilt off yeah so 
before we pivot to that, because that's like spot on to like pivot to it. Because like not only did I throw up, I, I felt better, of course. Like you said, I felt great. And I did. I never wanted to eat. I was like, I'm never going to do that again. Never I doing need to keep it again. my gains. Drove yeah. to Palm Springs, got to the condo we were staying at, went to the grocery store, got my, you know, t- whatever, tuna packets, protein, whatever, all this all this stuff that yeah. we're supposed to get, right? Do you, what do you think yeah. I ate for dinner? You slept like, with your ex-boyfriend. That's what you did. You went back I, to the I, I went. <laughs> <laughs> like, and you know better. <laughs> My dad wanted to go out to dinner. I'm on vacation. Why would yeah. I want to eat tuna packets and green beans on vacation yeah, when I no. can go out to, like, a fancy dinner yep. my dad's going to pay for? Even though I know so, better and I threw up this morning. Yep. Yeah, exactly. So, and you are perfect to explain this. So you can explain the science behind why this so happens. My notes and my stethoscope. Oh my goodness! Hat. No, I don't need my notes. No, um, because I, 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 always, I have clients that you know are in tears in their check-ins because you know they're like, mm-hmm. I'm trying to stick to this reverse, but every day I just, no matter how sick I got the day before, I, I, I want you know more food, um, and I think it's helpful to understand what's going on in your body so that you don't think that it's got everything to do with willpower and you know that you just you suck and mm-hmm. you have no sport, no, no place in this sport. Um, so it's, the, it, there are two, there was many hormones that are, you know, manipulate, mm-hmm. not manipulated. What's the word I'm looking for? Um, that are altered in what our bodies go through, um, in prep. Um, you know, our hypothalamus is downregulated, our pituitary gland, our female sex hormones, um, you know, testosterone, all these things change when we are leaner, um, when we're you know, in a caloric deficit for a long time. Especially our um, female hormones. They're almost non-existent. We can yeah. put ourselves in an infertile oh, state. Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, because maintaining, you know, stage lean for a while, if you've got, like, a lot of shows going on. I mean, I'm starting to kind of feel it now because it's been, mm-hmm. you know, a little while, and I still have another month um, before I'm going into a, a little break. Um, but, yeah, these things all change. So you'll be noticing along the way, you know, changes in libido, changes in energy level, all these things, right? Thyroid changes, all these things. And that's that's part of it, and it all it can all go back to normal. It really can. Yes. Um, but two really important hormones are leptin and ghrelin. And um, they're responsible for kind of a similar, you know, thing. Uh, ghrelin is the, um, the hunger hormone, and then leptin is the satiety hormone. And leptin is actually stored in body fat. So mm-hmm. as you're body fat decreases, you know, your leptin decreases. And, um, and what that means is that the food that used to satisfy you doesn't satisfy you anymore. Um, and so you go into your evening after the show, the day after the show, and you're eating food and the ghrelin increases as you start to eat more, you know, you've got the burger and then the ghrelin is, you know, really high. And then your leptin's still low because your body fat's still low. So mm-hmm. you don't have enough leptin to balance the ghrelin and you have this going on and it, it just takes time. It will level out and you don't have to gain weight, a ton of weight for it to level out. But, mm-hmm. you know, you have to kind of restore some of that body fat, you know, put on however much body fat your individual body needs. I will not say a number on this podcast. It's like a rule yeah. I have, Every- but everyone's different, but it just takes time to kind of level out. So if, if you're patient with yourself and just understand it's normal, then I think it's easier to navigate that without so much guilt and shame because Mm -hmm. if you feel too guilty and shameful, then you won't talk to people and you won't reach out for help and you just blame yourself and then you're eight weeks post-show and you're, you know, 40 pounds heavier and you feel terrible and you don't want to go to the gym because you're embarrassed and you feel like you've let everybody down and all your hard work is gone. And so I think that, you know, just understanding the science and then not putting so much blame and guilt on yourself is key mm-hmm. to just getting you just got to get through it it's rough and the cravings eventually they, they settle down um but i find what's helpful is to just like put a snack in your day and and it might yeah. scare you to do that but if you don't you're gonna eventually drive yourself crazy and find yourself mm-hmm. binging so you know if that means you have an oreo every day okay you it's fine mm-hmm. it's better than having 20 because you oh, yeah. made yourself crazy about them you know yeah, a perfect so. example, like my reverse diet, like, so the mental fortitude that you have to have, I know whenever you're going into your reverse diet, you want all of these things. You feel, as a, especially as a new competitor, you feel completely deprived. You have all of these hormone um, issues going on right now. They're trying to, like you said, trying to balance out. They're trying, they're fighting. It, your mental fortitude is is going to be 
kicked in the ass, really. Because yeah. you're going to be like, oh, well, one snack won't hurt, and this snack won't hurt, and this snack, and it adds up. One thing, I want to share with you a few things that I have done these last yeah. two weeks that have really, really helped me. And I I almost didn't even need the help, per se. Like, mm-hmm. I'd already, I'm, I'm already pretty, like, you know forget it. I'll just eat like an extra little bit of rice, like, and I'll deal, you know, whatever. But, but why do that when I can be a little bit more experimental, right? So like you said, have a, like somebody you can add a snack in or like what I do as I take one of my meals and my meals of being like protein, carbs, fat, veggie, one of my bigger meals, right? Mm -hmm. So I'll take that and I'll make protein ice cream. It's Mm -hmm. the same thing. It's the same measurement. I'll do protein ice cream. I'll use a Ninja Creamy. And then what I'll do is instead of my fats, like sometimes I, or with my fats, I'll put nut butter on it. If I have, if I don't have a fat, I'll make nut butter out of PB Fit. And you just Mm -hmm. do sugar-free maple syrup. And -hmm. you add water, salt. You can flavor it how you want. You can use that as, Mm -hmm. it is, you can use it as a drizzle. I, I, I don't think I've shown you this because this is a new purchase of mine don't have any with me right now i started using a uh, twisted dough protein dough their oh, macros I've had that before yeah i they always tasted good but mm-hmm. before i just couldn't keep them in the house i wasn't responsible enough just hands down <laughs> years ago like years ago i wasn't but yeah. now it's like okay no their macros fit really well they're very yeah. low fat low carb and high protein so i can do like a tablespoon of that and put it in the mm-hmm. microwave and it turns into like a cookie crumble because it bakes so i have like a brookie cookie crumble on oh, top of my protein ice water. cream <laughs> with pro- oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> with pro with a, a pb fit drizzle like the, you can come up with yeah. little creative ways so like pb fit sugar-free jelly sugar-free mm-hmm. um uh, maple syrup, you know, measure it out with a tablespoon. Don't go crazy because your stomach's still not used to those things. Like, don't just like squirt the whole thing on like that. You don't want to upset your stomach. But like a little bit here and there that can satisfy like that satiation mm-hmm. that you have for like, I want something sweet. I want something salty. You know, doing those kinds of things have really like just helped when I like yeah. I'm sitting watching TV with the husband at night and he's eating, you know, the stuff he's eating. Now, can I eat my normal, you know, food that's prepped? Absolutely. But like, you know, why not indulge a little bit in something that fits in? So just there's ways to be like slightly creative while you're slowly getting, you know, out of your prep and into your improvement season and finding those ways definitely can help, you know, finding things to cook and bake and, you know, it, it's helpful. It helps with those tastes for sure. I have clients send me things all the time on Instagram. I'm like, Hey coach, in six weeks, can this be on my reverse? I'm like, sure. Um, and mm-hmm. I, I think that that has really helped my clients. So at uh, our company, Mom Show Method Fitness, we do meal plans. We don't do macros. And so, um, you know, in the design of a meal plan, sometimes, mm-hmm. you know, we need input because your nutrition is very, very personal. I don't know, mm-hmm. you know, I, I can tell you what I would like to eat, but, you know, it's very personal. So um, I do a lot of collaborative meetings with my clients when we're planning reverse. Um, and it's like, hey, can I, like, have something sweet for breakfast? Like, maybe those, like, Kodiak pancakes. Like, I love those. Mm-hmm. Sure. I really miss my Quest bars. Yep, let's put those in. And I, I find mm-hmm. if we work together on it, it doesn't feel as strict. And we can kind of keep a tight rein. And then I each week when we check in, I'm assessing their hunger and how they're doing with their food relationship. And, um, you know, I had one client that was like, oh, my God, I, I – went kind of crazy on the cheddar, cheddar mini rice cakes. I was like, well, let's just build them into your plan, you know? Oh no, I think it might've actually been Cheetos. And I was like, okay, well, have you tried the cheddar mini rice cakes? And so we built those uh, in and she's like, I feel guilty eating these. And I'm like, but they're, it's fine. Like it's rice cake and it's cheddar. And she's like, but they're too good. I'm like, yeah, but that's what this is about. And then as mm-hmm. she sort of watched her body do well, and her metabolism increased, then she was like, oh my, you know, this is great. And we got to increase the food and, and all of that. So I think just like being able to have those conversations, like I'm going to talk to my coach um, about my reverse and, and kind of what my goals are and how I want to make things strategic for myself. Um, but of course, I have 19 years experience. So I have just a lot of, a lot of failures uh, that I can, mm-hmm. I can remember and, and not having plans. And also I have to prepare myself for two outcomes the one I want and the one I might, I don't want. And I have to be mentally strong in either way. Like I can't celebrate too much if things go the way that I have dreamt for my whole life. I can't be sad and in a hole and go down a bad 
path because they don't go that way. So I've mm-hmm. kind of like got that going on in my head and, and a plan for that so I can enjoy my summer and, you know, strategically plan for the rest. And so I just think it, it's smart it, it's smart to have a plan and don't just only think about up until the day of your show. Start thinking mm-hmm. about your reverse. Start having those conversations. Do Celeste's free course. Um, watch podcasts. Listen to YouTube all the things like get all the information that you can so that you're prepared um and just take it one day at a time like if you Mm -hmm. if you treated your prep like it all had to be achieved in like one week well i mean you'd never get there so the same goes for your reverse you know it's it's important to execute it well but if you don't it's okay you know you just have to take it one day at a time and focus on your goals and everybody's messed up and they always end up coming back and getting it together you know and you learn from it Hopefully. And right? always and always remember your goals because that's kind of the the process of the reverse. It's mm-hmm. like why are you going into a reverse and what do you want to accomplish with your improvement season? Because that's another thing, you know, you want to really think about, especially if you want to make this sport, you want to go pro, you want to go to a pro qualifying show, you want to grow in this sport, you want to look a certain way, yeah. you want to feel a certain way. Understand that a lot, if not all of that happens in your improvement season because yeah. that is the time where you can you are in your reverse you're raising your calories and the point of raising your calories is to regulate your hormones start building muscle tissue get you know get feeling better have you know a better mental fortitude you know mental strength and you mm-hmm. get to a point where okay understand that you're not going to look like you did in prep at the gym, you're going to look different and embrace that and love your body for it yeah. because now is when the real work begins and you can have so much fun with it. When mm-hmm. I tell you that in 2022, I, or 23, I traveled everywhere and I don't mean just for expediting. I went to Spain for two weeks. I went to Vegas. I went to Florida. I traveled, I traveled all the time for all sorts of different experiences, family stuff, sports stuff, you know, expediting, bodybuilding things. And I, I ate as best as I really could, you know, as I did, but I stayed consistent at the gym. And if you look at the post that I made today, I don't look like I do now. But like I'm able mm-hmm. to have the physique I have now because I spent time building it. And that's, you know, remember your why when you go into an off season. Yeah. Don't just sit and eat a bag of, you know, Doritos or whatever just because you can. Remember, like food is fuel. Food is yeah. going to help you achieve what you want to achieve. Rather, it's a physical look, you know, growth in the sport, you know, or, you know, wanting to be more active and have, you know, healthier long long life for your kids Mm -hmm. food is going to give you that and so is being active in the gym it's so Mm -hmm. true and i think we talked about this on a a prior episode about just like remembering who you are um Mm -hmm. and i think that most people like come into bodybuilding because they had a love for fitness they Mm -hmm. had a love for healthy eating they discovered how they felt when they ate a good amount of healthy protein and they drank water. So like, remember those things. Cause I think that was something that I forgot in my first, um, off season. Um, I, you know, went to a drive through and I don't think I'd ever been to like Burger King or like, I had never been like a, a fast food person ever in my life. Mm-hmm. Like again, that some of that stems from, you know, having battled anorexia and just, you know, just mm-hmm. choosing healthy options because I wanted to eat healthy. Um, so I, I was a very healthy eater and then I did my first show and all of a sudden I'm like getting, you know, dairy queen and like, what? Like, no, it's like, I, I I, yeah, like I, I, it just didn't make any sense. But again, there wasn't the information that we have now. So I think like, remember that when you, when you think about where you started and you know, how you came into this, um, and then just finding that, that balance and, um, and, and treating it like a choice. And, you know, if you, you love to work out, that's, that's why you did this. You wouldn't want to be a bodybuilder if you hated lifting weights. Right. Um, you right. know, and I think that just, you know, just having somebody to support you and, and having a plan, but, um, I, I went on a tangent there and I don't remember what I was going to say. It was <laughs> oh, good, so wait, is this, good. this is when I have to carry yep. us. So there <laughs> is, there is Getting ready for a reverse, though, I do want to talk about this because mm-hmm. I feel like it's probably one of the most difficult things, um, especially being an expediter and traveling to all the shows that I see every show. We'll just say every yeah. show. Mm-hmm. Um, 
as you compete and you have all your friends and family just love on you and support you and cheer you on and it's fantastic, communicate with them. Like mm -hmm. sit down, have a phone call, whatever it is, and let them know like, hey, I love that you're going to be at my show. I love that you're going to come see me. I love that you're going to cheer me on. Please don't bring food. Hmm. Every I'm time. Good. I don't it, need it. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want to <laughs> I always see competitors that are just very excited and elated. They love the sport. They're so happy. And a lot of times, like friends and family, they mean well. They do, they never mean a disservice. Mm -hmm. They look at our sport and think, okay, my son, husband, wife, whatever, mother, just you know did a 24 week prep. Um, now she can go out to dinner every other day. Now she can drink wine with me. Now she can have, you know, she, we can go, we can have burgers every night. You know, they, they believe that after you're done competing, then you can yeah. return back to a person that maybe you, you never actually were. Yeah. They just are so used to you meal prepping and being at the gym and being scheduled well, and being really it strict. Being terrible. Like it was so awful. Yeah. Surely you cannot wait to just go to Chick-fil-A every night, you know? They don't understand. And nothing is wrong with that. But, like, having a conversation with your friends and family mm -hmm. and understand and let them un know, like, hey, I really – bring me flowers, you know, something special that's fantastic. But, you know, if you want to go out to dinner and celebrate with them, great. Enjoy that time. Yeah. I always recommend spreading out the love. <laughs> like, yeah. ha if your friends and family are at your show, go to dinner, you know, do what you planned. But then if you have other friends and family that have waited to, I don't know, like spend time with you and you want to do a food thing with them, plan it for the just next week or the next, it's yeah, spread anywhere. it out. Yeah. Just communicate because they don't know. They will never understand. It's up to you to set those boundaries for them so they can respect them and mm -hmm. everybody will be happier because the last thing you want to do is feel forced to go out to dinner and then nobody's going to have a good time. Yeah. And nobody's yeah. going to feel good. Again, like you have all the time in the world, like the mm -hmm. food's not going anywhere. It's, you know, yeah. getting out of that scarcity mindset of, you know, like, oh, I got to get all this eating in because I'm going. I feel know. like that's my new saying. What is? It really is. The food. The food's not going anywhere. The like we can door dash it. I can mm -hmm. sit here right now and pick up my phone and I can door dash like a whole carrot ca ca I like carrot cake. Carrot cake with my name on it and say like, congratul I don't know, say whatever I want it to and it'll be on my door in like, I bet like 45 minutes. Is that like, just blows your mind, food. doesn't it? It does. It's it insane. Does. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I, I remember what I was going to say. Oh, oh you did? did it. Yeah. <laughs> Look at good. you go. It's good. Um, so, um, you know, what I think is, is important and what is wonderful about, you know, all of the information that we have now is sort of this like, um, acceptance of being an athlete all year round. And, mm. and truly when you look at shows and you look at the level of competition, even at like in the true novice class at these shows, you know, this isn't like a four months and done sort of endeavor. And, and really, I don't know what the statistics are, but like, I would say most people don't just do one show. Like I think they do one show and, and they might prep for like seven years before they do another one, but they're kind of always thinking about it because it is just so satisfying and you're so proud of yourself, you know? And so if that's the case, you have to think about your goals all year round and like, no, you're not laser focused in your improvement season. You're like, you know, I remember one time I was counting and I was like, I'm 385 days out. <laughs> like it was really far away. Um, yeah. But, you know, was I laser focused the entire time? No. You know, you've got you to have that time to just like, you know, give yourself a break. But did I take my vitamins every day and pour out my measured water and drink my protein? Like I remember my um, stepkids when they first kind of got used to me and my habits and, you know, all of us living together and I competed – you know, I'm making like, you know, chicken and rice and protein pancakes. And they're like, why are, are you doing a competition? And I'm like, well, yeah, next summer. Well, why are you eating that? I'm like, because I eat this all the time. Like, this is how I eat, right? And oh, yeah. Aaron's so, smoking my chicken. To, well, he was going to smoke it yeah. tonight till the rain. But tomorrow he's smoking all my chicken. And I still have my carrots in the fridge. Yeah. I mean, like, I love carrots and it, because I really do love that food. And um, mm -hmm. it doesn't like, it doesn't bother me. Like, I will meal prep and take food with me 
you know, to Branson when we go on our family vacation, like, yeah, I'm, I'm going to have more freedom, you know, and flex mm-hmm. meals to play with and, you know, some little cheeky cocktails here and there. But like, you know, I'm probably I'm going to train every day and I'm I, that's me. That's who I am. And so um, it's sort of like a, um, I talked to somebody today about this is a really cool thing that that she did. And um, she evaluates her days. Is she an A or an O? And an A is an athlete and an O is the old version of you. And so oh, if you treat yourself like an athlete, you put an A. And if you are O, old version of you, which might be, you know, self-sabotaging, you know, n- no consistency, um, you know, not following a plan, mm-hmm. not not being intentional, um, and then sort of looking at your month and going like, okay, should I have more A's than O's? And so... I, I loved that. I thought, oh my, God, I'm totally stealing that. I don't know why I'm going to use it, but I'm stealing it. I think that's so great because that's what you want to move towards. And, it, and that's not saying perfect. Nowhere in there did I say perfect. I said intentional. That's like you get you mm-hmm. get a grid and you mark A or O, A or O, and then after like 300 grids, like mm-hmm. you know what I mean, like the grid paper that people, like kids get for yeah. algebra well, and stuff. I know. Yes. But, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but... <laughs> That was a dumb question. <laughs> you want to go in my school yeah, supply you... closet in my uh, basement I and have, grab some? <laughs> I have one, and I have a school supply area because, yeah, I, what a Girl, waste. I have a whole I – could, I could run a school for three freaking years <laughs> with the stuff. I, and they bring it all home. I'm like, I don't need any more glue sticks. Yeah. You know, they use Chromebooks for everything. I'm like, why do you even need mm-hmm. 27 glue sticks? Whatever. That's why I have so many like binders and stuff in there. But anyways, yeah. no, that's so the A and O. So then after, like, yeah, it yeah. is. That is neat. Yeah, Look so at you beating up I your thought, mic. I know. I'm like in that phase of prep where I really can't get comfortable. Um, so, anyways, yeah, I thought that was really cool and um, mm-hmm. and truly like that is like how I view uh, my reverse and improvement season now. I don't think that was the case years ago when I was still really battling with eating issues and, you know, my food relationship. But, um, you know, I came back from a break in um, 2020 and that was when things were really different for me. Um, a lot of things had changed in my life and, and that is like kind of how I just look at things. It's like, you know, I'm not going to stop, you know, taking my vitamins and my pre-workout and my intro workout and, I'm still going to go to the gym at the same time every day like I do now. Like that is like just, and, and honestly, cause that stuff makes me happy. So, you know, I, yeah. I would ask every competitor if they're like, Oh, I just, I don't want to go to the gym and I don't want to eat chicken. And I'm like, well, okay. Then maybe those things don't make you happy. Okay. But well, they do. Okay. Well then maybe we just need a little bit of variety, switch things up a little bit so that you can right. find, you know, maybe you need, you know, a new gym. Like maybe you need, you know, to go get some new, tennis shoes or you know a new mm-hmm. playlist or something just to switch things up spice it up a little bit so you get excited mm-hmm. again um because yeah. for some people it's really hard when the show's over to stay motivated and and i get it i've been there for sure mm-hmm. we both have yeah we have so well everybody we i hope you enjoyed this episode i hope you got some really good yeah. tips and a little insight to us i mean we we kind of shared some deep stuff there I do. and i love <laughs> when i hear from people that they've like taken a nugget from our episode mm-hmm. you know because that's truly like i always say this is our passion project because we make zero dollars doing this and we just do it because we love it and mm-hmm. i enjoy connecting with people and and hearing that you know we've benefited your your day that you listen to us when you're doing cardio and you got something from it. Mm-hmm. So, um, please, you know, just let us know. And, and we're here for support too. If you're like, you know, want to talk and you don't have anybody to talk to, I'm, I'm here for you. Just send me a DM. Oh yeah. You know? Always, always DM either yeah. one of us. And if you ever, ever, especially cause I'm, I'm expediting the rest of the NPC Midwest shows this year. If you ever see me at a show during check-ins, if you see me like, and you want to take pictures or you want to do anything or if you have any questions like feel free to like ask me i know i've met quite a few people at shows i've expedited or been in and it really like i it it jolts me like i because like you said it is a passion project we you and i got together back in november october and it's like we want to share all as much as we possibly can to help Mm -hmm. as many people as we possibly can understand that you're not alone. We all go through this. We all, you know, are getting older. We all love competing. We all have goals outside of our kids, you know, and we all want to be a better, healthier version of ourselves and like step on stage or in a bikini. And like, we want to share all this with you guys. And so if you ever see either one of us, like, oh my gosh, just like ask us anything, let us know Mm -hmm. how you feel. Give us feedback in person. (laughs) Yeah. 
Yeah, then we like people will tell us like, "Oh, your mic is too quiet." I'm like, "Oh, I know, thank you." Um, you know, because we, we I wanna, know. Yeah, we want to bring like you know a, an episode that's enjoyable for you to listen to, and and we're, mm-hmm. and we're still learning. Like there is no training on how to do this. Like we're just like, okay, yeah, let's see how this goes. You know, I know there really isn't. <laughs> no, we really we wing it. it. Like you should be. I know, and the IT yeah. people sometimes I have to talk to. I'm just like, I, I'm learning. I, I <laughs> don't even better, understand how like like analytics work like when i found out we were like number three in in spain or, or what kind, or some country were like no i was like yeah i don't know what it means but i'm like that's awesome but i don't really right. understand how it all works because all i really care about is you guys and sharing what mm-hmm. i know and the fact that anyone's interested in my boring life it's like <laughs> fascinating to me that i'm like you know but I, I really it really is just fills my heart to do this so yeah well, Sorry, guys, you thank guys. you. S- I know. <laughs> well, guys, thank you so much for listening. And again, let us know any of your thoughts and feedback. And we'll see you next week. Bye, Bye everyone.